The rudest Green Lantern of all is coming to HBO Max. In brightest day, in blackest night, no casting new shall escape my sight. Let those who worship evils might beware my power. Some really cool news about Green Lantern, right? Anyway, folks, like Ab and Sir Crash Landing on Earth, HBO Max is coming in hot this Friday with some brand new casting news and the first plot details about their upcoming Green Lantern series. As The Hollywood Reporter Hollywood reported, American Horror Story and Ratchet star Finn Whitrock will be leaving the Ryan Murphy-verse behind to join the DC multiverse instead as one of the most iconic a-holes in all of comics, Guy Gardner. What, you were expecting someone else? I know, right? The series from Arrowverse mega producer Greg Berlanti and Warner Brothers TV described Gardner as a, quote, hulking mass of masculinity and, as rendered in the comics, an embodiment of 1980s hyper-patriotism, and yet Guy is somehow likable. Now, for those who don't know, Guy Gardner was created by John Broom and Gil Kane, first appearing in 1968's Green Lantern Volume 2, number 59. This brash, red-headed Green Lantern has perhaps the greatest superpower of all, unyielding, seemingly limitless confidence in himself. What's that like? This incredible willpower is what made him one of two people Ab and Sir deemed worthy to inherit his ring when the former Green Lantern of Sector 2184 crash-landed on Earth. And as it turns out, Hal Jordan got the gig because he happened to be closer to Ab and Sir at the time of the accident, which led to Guy Gardner becoming Earth's backup Green Lantern until he was hit by a bus and taken out of commission for a while. I'm sorry I'm laughing, but... It's just a preposterous excuse. Over the years, Guy has developed a reputation for being something of the Raphael of the DC Universe, which is to say, cool, but rude. Well, actually, he's not really cool, just really rude. He often serves as a foil to characters like Hal Jordan and Jon Stewart, taking a much harder line and making more headstrong decisions than either of his fellow Earthbound Green Lanterns. He's been a member of the Green Lantern Corps and the Justice League International, and he's considered to be one of the strongest Green Lanterns, mainly because his supply of willpower is seemingly inexhaustible. There is no bottom to this well. But perhaps his greatest moment in all of comics is during 1987's Justice League No. 5, when Batman reveals that he's secretly the inspiration for One Punch Man by knocking Guy out with a single punch to the face. Okay, maybe I'm just a hater, but this moment unequivocally rules. And it's okay because Hal Jordan has Guy's back when he does the same thing to Batman years later in Green Lantern Rebirth number 6. Now, interestingly enough, this marks Guy Gardner's second live-action incarnation. He also appeared in the ill-fated Justice League of America pilot for CBS back in the late 90s, as played by Gossip Girl star Matthew Settle. And you thought that no Green Lantern could possibly be worse than that 2011 movie. I know, right? In addition to Whitrock's casting as Guy Gardner, HBO Max also revealed the official show description, which gives us our best sense yet about what this show will actually encompass. Green Lantern reinvents the classic DC property through a story spanning decades and galaxies, beginning on Earth in 1941 with the very first Green Lantern, secretly gay FBI agent Alan Scott, and 1984 with cocky alpha male Guy Gardner and half-alien Bree Jarda. They'll be joined by a multitude of other Lanterns from comic book favorites to never-before-seen heroes. Honestly, fantastic news for die-hard DC fans, because we're going to be getting some Golden Age adventures with the original Green Lantern himself, Alan Scott, set one year after his comic book debut in 1940. Let's just hope he doesn't have to do any fighting in a, like, a lumber mill or a local park, because his ring is ineffective against wood, which is only slightly less silly than Hal Jordan's ring not working against the color yellow. You know, that old classic comic book explanation for this. Oh no, a single tree during fall. That's two Green Lanterns that can't fight it. The bigger question is whether or not we might meet characters like Hal Jordan or Jon Stewart at all in this series, or if they're going to save them for like season two, or maybe that rumored Green Lantern Corps movie that feels like it's been in development for exactly 100 years at this point. The bigger question is whether or not Alan Scott will cross paths with Bree Jarda and Guy Gardner at all in this series, or if their stories will run in parallel as this season-long mystery unfolds. Regardless, it's kind of surreal to think we're finally going to have a big-budget Green Lantern TV show, but I guess considering how expansive the Arrowverse has become on the CW and giving us things like Gorilla Grodd and King Shark, I shouldn't be surprised that HBO Max is now willing to fork over a couple of burlap sacks with dollar signs painted on them to bring some of DC Comics' most iconic characters to life. In the meantime, though, for even more deep dives into the DC Universe, we've got you covered over on Nerdist. And for now, tell us, what do you think about this casting and about those plot details? What do you want to see from a Green Lantern show? And what would your Green Lantern ring be ineffective against? Let us know in the comments below, and for the latest and greatest in the world of pop culture, stay tuned to Nerdist.com.